all here today to um, answer the call to action from SOS Black Australia um, for the fifth, um, this is the fifth time that they've called a, a national and international um, call out for people to march against the forced closures in um, WA but also we stand against forced closures of Aboriginal communities all over this nation. So um, it's been fairly quiet on the government's behalf, um, they haven't um, said really much, pretty much anything, they haven't given any information, they've um, chopped and changed the reasonings as to why they're going to close the communities. Um, so we're all marching here today because you know there obviously has been changes in governments and um, this campaign is hopefully to put pressure on governments to not close essential services and communities. Um, from our understanding is that they don't want to um, pull out of their decision to to stop the forced closures so we'll continue to apply pressure where we can and answer the call to action every time. Okay the new Prime Minister Malcolm Turnbull do you think WA communities are in safer hands now? Um, from my understanding, um, all colonial governments um, successively from the time of colonisation have never really made any policies or any decisions that have ever benefited Aboriginal people. So given the history um, of the Australian government's um, genocidal policies against Aboriginal people, I don't think that that's going to change anytime soon. Um, I think uh, the, the quicker that we can come self become self-determining and independent from government control and government policy. And we're here to send a strong message of support to all country men and women living in remote communities that are still threatened with closure. Uh, this is the first anniversary of the announcement by Colin Barnett in Western Australia about the possible closure of up to 150 Aboriginal communities. These communities have always looked after the land, they've always been connected and understood the way that this country works in a way that more recent arrivals have never understood. We're having this rally because exactly one year ago, the Western Australian uh, Premier, Colin Barnett, announced the planned forced closure of Aboriginal communities, up to 150 communities in Western Australia, following cutting off funds by the federal government. So the responsibility went from the colonial administration in Canberra to those smaller colonial administrations in the states. We can expect, if we do not succeed in supporting our brothers and sisters on country in Western Australia, that it will not stop there. We can expect that it will move on to other states, other territories, APY lands and the Northern Territory being the next possibly in line. But will we let that happen? No. no! A quarter of our people are in jail. 90% of our children being removed today are because of domestic violence laws put on us all by the state of Victoria. We are supporting the non-closures of Aboriginal communities in remote areas where nobody can see them because we don't want that to happen to our brothers and sisters there. We know what it feels like to be discriminated every day of our life. We do not enjoy the same things that many people do in this state. This is our land. We're all human beings. We all live on this earth. We have to stop the propaganda machine that turns us against each other with hatred. Why do people want to come to this country? I don't know, because it's pretty damn racist. But why do they come here? Because their own country is being destroyed by the greedy Western countries who want it for the resources. We have to let, we have to stop that so those people can go home. No one wants to leave their home. No one wants to be afraid for their children. We have to turn up our TVs and stop listening to the propaganda machines who are turning us against each other and turning us to hate each other because you know why? They're diverting our attention to the real issue here. We do not want war and we do not want our land destroyed. The people of WA, you need to listen to these East Coast mobs.
job. They know what the beast looks like. It hit here first. There are big climate change, your refugees, imperialist war invasion to another man's land. Same story. Same, same shit, different century. Layer upon layer upon layer. Do you know what its name is? Is it a white man? It's a system. It's capitalism. People want to start thinking about their roles in this society. How do you partake? Or is there someone else to blame? We're going to blame this government. Or you got shares in BHP. The true terrorists, what about corporate terrorism? I made a couple of signs today. There's a few. This one. My ancestors' skulls sit in the British Museum. The only people ever beheading anyone in this land were the people who stole the land with churches on every corner. One. Two. I know who this word terrorist, I know who they are. And I'm going to keep spruiking it until you all know who they are and we stop acquiescing and pumping it and breathing life into it anymore. Don't pay to travel on stolen land. Don't pay to park on st stolen land. Have a look at this joy. White man's dream time. Check it out. <laughs> Proceeds of crime. Wow. The principle of colonisation is to take your money, take your money, and take everyone's money. Have a look at how they celebrate it, people. Have a look at the top of all these buildings. That's capitalism for you. It wasn't meant to be this way. Australia's nothing but a crime scene. And it'll remain that way until you've got a treaty. As per the instructions from your own sovereign. Get consent to negotiate. So whilst that's the situation, there's an undeclared ongoing war going on. Australia's the only Commonwealth country without a treaty. 76 different Commonwealth countries all got treaty as a foundation. This is not just a small country, this is a continent. This is really the, the jewel in the crown. And it's very important, Australia, in terms of Western colonialism globally. It's a great contributor to these other rogue nations who feed off this place here, this criminal outfit. It's what it is. The genocide's premeditated. It's criminal premeditated genocide. This is your foundation, Oz. It's all about resource theft. That's what's the motivation behind it all and global domination. I refer to this country as a Nazi wet dream. Yes! If they had been successful, the Nazis, people should go and have a look at what happened in these Nuremberg trials. What happened? What was the rest of the people doing while this regime was, this tyrannicidal regime was tearing a place apart? What was the government of that place doing? Just going along, following orders? Well, this is a classic example of what Australia is. And we all know that they're hiding behind this lie called Terra Nullis. And their own bullshit court described Terra Nullis as an act of unutterable shame. Australia's an unspeakable crime. That's what the High Court was trying to say to us. They couldn't say it. This is the foundation of the occupation. An unspeakable crime, Oz. How dare Australia moralise about any human rights atrocities anywhere else on this globe? Anywhere. It's disgusting. This is when the truth's going to emerge. Australia's been one of the greatest liars of all time, right? The whole country's built on lies, deceit, fraud, propaganda and race hatred indoctrination. That's why people don't know nothing about the original people of this land here. Your bullshit education system, part of the, the policy of assimilation. In fact, anybody working in this government here, so-called government, it's not a legal one. If there are Aboriginal people working there, their job is to assimilate the others. The government's policy towards our people is a policy of assimilation. Now for me, assimilation is the worst form of genocide you can imagine. Someone said, we're the colonised refugees in our own land. 
We're Holocaust survivors. Yes, we are. Our population was reduced by 99% so you can have this crap yeah, called Australia. Right? And force us to assimilate into that. Now all this is going to unravel folks. So get with the program. Get rid of this criminal outfit called the Australian Government. Without a treaty, they're a, they're a criminal, illegal regime, illegally occupying the land. Australia's something else, folks. It's not just a small country like Germany. This is a continent the size of Europe. And people should start to realise what the magnitude and the dimension of crime scene in Australia really is. You're not answerable to these criminals, are you? Stand up when you go to their bullshit court. Ask them where they get the jurisdiction. Their case falls apart. One, one last thing, I just want to say, their, their courts are based on maritime law, the law of the sea. We hold the law of the land. The original people hold the law of the land. This has never been negotiated, their occupation yet. They said it was empty. All right, so you need to go back there and negotiate your basis of occupation in this country. And we have a, we have a treaty and we have a, a thing called the pay the rent concept. User pays. It's about 227 years since the zombie apocalypse. So we want the rent money, we want the damages bill, and we want a war crimes commission so this shit never happens again. It's been over five decades now. This the ongoing genocide, the marginalization, this global capitalism that is happening right on just 150 kilometers north. And yet we haven't heard a lot of those killings, tortured, people disappeared in the front page news. Just two weeks ago, there are 41 children died of unknown illness. And there has been investigation of this. And it's, it's, it's right now investigated. No one knows. It's our liberty. It's our fundamental rights. It's the rights of the indigenous people, the land rights, the environment that we all care about. It's what that we face with the policies that is really putting us in this situation to come out and stand together to call for a change to those policies. I've got to get the word right. Woman Jigger. That's the local word for hello. Our mob, where I live in Western Australia, in Perth, we say Kaya. Where I've been through law and culture in the Pilbara, in the northwest of Western Australia, in Jabandi, in Nalamamob, we say Waiba or Wandawa. I'd also like to say hello from the language of the Southern Tasmanians, who sadly probably aren't represented here today. They have one of the loveliest words you ever hear. Yeah! yeah! The communities you people are here on behalf of or for today are our communities. The, um, I was taken into law and culture as an outsider in Robin, in the Pilbara, one of the areas that generates a lot of the wealth of this land. Our law boss, I pay tribute to, Timmy Douglas, and also, he's the Nalama law boss. And also to my brother, Michael Woodley, who is standing up for the Njibandi people with companies like Fortescue Mining. A few years ago, the, um, I was fortunate to go to the Madu lands with the government doing the census collection. And I said to these people, each community I went to, you have to get as many numbers on these forms as you can, legally, because these forms are going to be used to close you down. So the fellas in Coonawaraji, Kunmu, Jigalong, all these places, they very much appreciate what you're doing today. I hate, hate serious stuff, you know, I'm a bush poet and um, I make films and stuff. I hope someone's filming me. Eh? <laughs> the, um, you know, one, one short um, verse off a palm I wrote once. 
First Nations think in circles, the new order in straight lines, the lines they have a blockage because of corporate times, materialistic times, corrupt times, whatever you want to call them. But we all know what that means. And I want to bring you a message of hope because my boss, my dad, Timmy Douglas, he's not an angry man. We've experienced everything, deaths in custody. He's the custodian for Murujuga. And you may not know that word, but Murujuga is the area of the Burrup Peninsula Rock Art, which the West Australian Government has just decided on behalf of whoever, that is no longer a sacred site. Well, we say to the West Australian Government, we don't really care what you say, because we know it's a sacred site. Let's remember, remember why we are here. We are here because the government is forcibly removing people from their land, the original people from this land, my people from their land. That is why we are here today, to say no, no, that is not acceptable. No, no, you are not shutting down those communities. Enough is enough. Is that right? Yeah. Enough is enough. We are sovereign people. We continue to survive against the systematic genocide that continues and continues and has continued since the first fleet. And you know what? We're not going anywhere. We're not going anywhere. We never will. This is our land. And come on, we know why they want to move those communities. We know the truth. The truth of the matter is the money, the mining. And what is going to happen with that money? Is it going to go back to that community? No. Time and time again it has shown all the profit that is made off this beautiful land that we call Australia Oh, that's called Australia. My land is called Gamilaroi. This land is called Wurundjeri. This state is the Kulin, the Kulin people. Not Australia. So what are you going to do? How are you going to help beyond today? How are you going to influence in your, in your, your circles? How are you going to make your change for the better of our people, of all people, of human beings? Because that's what we are. We are human beings. Um, I've spoken at pretty much all of these rallies and it really disheartens me when I think about what I was going to say today. I have nothing new to say. There is no new information. They still want to close down the communities. It is still an act of genocide. The same acts of genocide that have happened since, since the white man got here by consecutive governments over and over again. I wanted to read out today uh, and, uh, some words from um, Isabel Richard. She's a Gunbaran woman from Kalgoorlie. We, the people who've lived in Kalgoorlie, go back into time and have seen and heard it all over and over and have become numb. We have seen our people, people moved off their traditional homelands into our land. We have seen our people live on the fringes of the towns and in the parks. We have seen the hopelessness, sadness and loss of cultural identity. We have seen the alcoholism, the drug use and violence. We have seen these people living in the fringes of the towns and in the parks. We have seen the homelessness truancy, and the truancy of children through the lack of homes and family life. We have seen them lose their connection to their heart and spirit, their country. We have seen their loss of their cultural laws and protocols resulting in a very in very dire social problems and lack of respect for others as well as themselves 
the loss of living by their cultural norms and the laws and having to live in a white man's world. We have seen the council build tin shacks for them to live in and then say, look at what we've done for you, you should be grateful. We have seen new governments come and go and heard their promises time after time. So when we say we are numb, it is because we have seen it all. We feel powerless to help or to anything to do or to do anything for our people. But now things are changing. People are standing up and protesting. We are now seeing black fellas from places in Perth, Melbourne, Sydney, Brisbane and all across Australia as well as the world marching in protest against the closure of communities. Communities where our people live, work, have families, build lives, go to schools, enjoy their culture, where their families have died and been buried. We now read on social media and the messages of support and encouragement of blackfellas across this country to stand up and be counted, to show the government who we are, where we come from, and, we will not, and that we will not be silenced. We are being awakened to the knowledge that we have rights, just like all Australians. We, are all, we also have the right to show Australia that we are here, that we belong here, that we live in this land, our country, our place, and that we'll be heard because our people matter. The global response to climate change so far that we've seen is a response and it's, and it's a display that people aren't valued equally in this world. The lives of black and brown people aren't valued as much as the lives of white people. It's true, it's hard to say, but it's true. And you know, what's it gonna take to live in a world where the lives of all people are valued equally? It doesn't matter what the color of your skin is, it doesn't matter what your race is, it doesn't matter how much money you have in your pocket, and it doesn't matter whether the issue is in my backyard or yours. We all need to stand up for each other. What about the WA communities? Oh, unique, amazing communities. Um, they, they're all the, they, they're, that's where all the culture is. That's the core of culture. Culture's the core of health. Culture's, you know, what keeps you connected to your family and stuff, yeah. Amazing place. And what do you think might be the situation if some of those communities in WA were forced to close? Oh, you'd lose your culture, you'd lose everything pretty much. Yeah. There's no use being Aboriginal if there's no culture. <laughs> this is not going away. There's still the threat to the people in those remote communities about closure. And it doesn't matter how often you do this and how many people turn up, you've got to keep sending out the message there that this is not on, it's unacceptable, this is genocide against the Aboriginal people of this land and we have to stop it. So we're not going away anywhere, we're going to need to deal with our human rights issues, which includes this land and its occupation and how it's, and the law of it. The land's not just a piece of dirt. The land is sacred, it's not yours, you don't own it. You're a caretaker and a custodian for future generations. Once that's understood by people, you have a different outlook. You don't defile it. You don't cause problems that are going to last into generations beyond your existence. You take care of the land. We want a crime scene investigation. British Crown Pirate Corporation ruled the waves and waved the rules. <laughs> Terra Nullis, legal fiction. No consent, no treaty, no jurisdiction. White only policy constitution. Hard eyed law, reservation, mission stations, compounds, jails, concentration, over representation, incarceration, deaths in custody, stolen generations, mental harm, torture, first prevention. <laughs> Intent to destroy, they create the conditions. Australia's a crime scene. It's a criminal nation. We want a crime scene investigation. Do not touch, do not enter. Let us sort out this unfinished. Australia's not open for business. We've got unfinished business. Namely, genocide, 
an illegal occupation, resource theft, all that sort of shit that comes with colonialism. Back off, not your land, not your law. Simple. Put a photo of me.